Hi again, I'm Walt Moore, also known as Dan Wilson, and uh, another Friday evening, nothing much going on, so I thought I'd shoot a little home video once again, which I haven't done for a while. As you can see, I'm dressed in my best business attire, the old brown work shirt back on again, so it's time to get a little work done in the garage for this evening. Well, it's the first full week of March, and probably in about the next two to three weeks, guess what time of year it is once again? mowing season <laughs> so just a couple days ago I was checking out the old white riding lawnmower back here behind me and uh, every year I'll check the oil and probably get an oil change and uh, sharpen the blades and and uh, get it all lined out ready for mowing season and guess what I discovered uh, about two days ago let me uh, grab the camera off the tripod there show you guys kind of what I got going on here as I mentioned before, I run a little part-time business here repairing lawn garden equipment and work on all kinds of stuff. So, let me grab the camera and uh, just do it by hand here. I'll show you guys a little problem we got going on here. Look at this mess right here. Just as I was trying to get set up to maybe do a little mowing here in the near future. And the doggone tire on the front side here has gone flat and already off the rim. You can see it's already broken the bead on there. So, as I mentioned in my other videos, these tires, if I replace the entire tire, it's going to cost about 40 or 50 bucks to buy a new tire. So, a much less expensive way to repair this, we're going to do here in just a little bit. Instead of replacing the entire tire, we're just going to put a new inner tube in there. Our first thing we're going to, need to do is jack up the front of the riding lawnmower. So, right here I have one of my floor jacks i believe we got it up enough there we can hopefully get the wheel off there so as i mentioned all the time uh, uh most of my videos are for folks who maybe have never done this type of repair and could just need maybe use some pointers and uh so i always mention if there are any professional uh repair people out there some of my video content may not be for you if you've done this for as long as I have. I've been doing this kind of repair for like 30 plus years. And so um, if it's boring to you, well, <laughs> you know, you have the option of skipping the video of watching something else. But for folks who really would like to learn how to save some money on their machines and just really don't know how to do some of this stuff, that's what most of my video stuff is all about. And let's look at the uh, tool layout here just for a minute. It doesn't really take a lot of tools on a repair like this. I got my channel locks here. You might wonder what these are for. Uh, once I get the wheel off, or get the old tire off of there, I've got to pull out the old valve stem. That's what I use these for. Some very uh, nice screwdrivers. I usually use these for prying off, prying the tube off of the wheel. Need of those pliers are handy. A new tool, I started to show you guys a minute ago, <laughs> I got distracted. I just purchased this tool like about two or three weeks ago. It is a pick that is super handy for pulling cotter pins, also, if you work with things like heater hoses on vehicles, uh, these picks like this are really handy. If you have trouble getting a hose loose, you can take the pick and just work it in around the hose and um, usually work those hoses loose like that. So let's get back over here and see if we can get this doggone cotter pin out of here. Okay, back rolling once again. And here's what I'll get ready to show you guys. Uh, this is just in case you don't know about some of these products. I've met person after person after person trying to do some of their own mechanical work and having all kinds of trouble with rusted up nuts and bolts and and various things and just in case you've never heard of this here's some stuff right here called PB Blaster and I can tell you this is some of the best stuff in the world I don't work for this company and I don't have them as a sponsor don't get the wrong idea but I just want to show you guys in case you've you're not familiar with this stuff it's called PB Blaster you can get this at just about any hardware store um, what I use, I'm going to show you again, you can get this in a small aerosol can, about 12 or so, 12, 14 ounces, if you're how much it, it comes in the can. But in smaller aerosol cans, those in most stores sell for about three to four something dollars a can, I think, something like that. Don't know the exact pricing. What I've learned to do since some of my local stores now carry this in the one gallon size, here it is again and a one gallon size um, at one store well i'll go ahead and say it it's called menards <laughs> which is my favorite store i love menards they don't mind getting a plug every once in a while i'm sure they have this in the one gallon size for right at 20 bucks 
Now that can save you a lot of money. If you're going to use a lot of this stuff, which I do, I suggest getting it in the one gallon size because when you do the math on that, you're getting a lot more product for a lot less money. Um, another store I shop at once in a while has the same deal that comes with a included uh, sprayer. So theirs is about 20 about 25 bucks, something, something like that, with the sprayer. But without the sprayer, about 20 bucks, like I said, at Menards has it. Again, PB Blaster, some of the best stuff in the world. So what I'm going to do next is take the PB Blaster, which I have in a handy spray bottle here. I, I lost the spray bottle that came with this can here. I don't know where it is anymore, so I just bought a little cheapy spray bottle here. What we're going to do, I'm going to try very hard not to get this on my camera, because... <laughs> I mentioned before in some of my other videos that one reason I don't do much action type videos because I don't want to break my camera. I use a lot of chemicals and a lot of different stuff in my shop here. So I don't want to mess the camera up. But I thought this time I'll show you guys this is how I do some of this stuff. So we got back to the wheel over here. We're trying to take off. Okay, this wheel is, to the best of my knowledge, this wheel has never come off of this machine before. So we're going to shoot some PB Blaster right in here. Around that rusted area right there. Look at that. This reason I point this out, you can literally see the rust dissolving off of that spindle that that wheel is on. Can you see that? This stuff literally dissolves rust. It just makes it go away. And it's not only a great lubricant, it's what's called a catalyst. What a catalyst does, it literally dissolves rust. So we're going to let that soak on there for a little bit. You know, I'm probably going to have to do is take my hammer and tap that wheel a little bit. Of course, there is a bearing inside there, and I do not want to mess the bearing up, so I'm not going to just beat the crap out of it. So I'm going to try to get that wheel off here in a little bit. So that PB Blaster is going to work on that and make that work out great. Guess what? I run into some challenges every once in a while doing some of this work, but I never give up without a fight, and I usually win. So here we go. I finally got the wheel off the riding lawnmower so there it is and not too big of a deal i had to take my hammer and just tap on it just a little bit i'm gonna zoom in on the spindle here a little bit this is what the wheel sits on of course this has got a certain amount of rust on there what i'll do before i put the wheel back on i'm gonna clean that up real thoroughly some brake cleaner and um, i sometimes use some emery cloth on stuff like this if it's got some burrs and stuff this one doesn't feel bad at all so i think we're okay just to clean that off good and it's still in really good shape it's always check all this stuff here the all these steering components are still in really good shape here so i believe we're okay with that so anyway here's the wheel and we're going to next put this up on the old black and decker workmate i have right here another very important thing you have in any shop because i tell you i get flat out filthy at times doing this kind of stuff but you know that's part of the deal so if you if you're getting stuff like this on your own very important don't forget one of the all-time shop essentials shop towels and plenty of them okay once again here's the wheel removed off of the riding lawnmower and our next challenge is to get the tire off the rim i see you guys thought i was joking i told you i really do this kind of work i do uh every kind of repair under the sun including tire work i really i don't like tire work near as well as the stuff i get into but it's just part of it and I usually just take on whatever comes up and the one thing about these small tires is there's an old saying in tire repair that is the smaller the tire the more of a pain in the butt it's gonna be and I also work on uh, regular vehicle tires and even uh, large truck tires believe it or not and it seems like the larger the tire the easier it is to work with Okay, so what I'm working on doing now is breaking this bead. I probably failed to mention this is originally what's called a tubeless tire. And until they start dry rotting, they work really well, at least when they're new. These tires are about probably 20, uh, at least 20 years old, I think. So what happens is after a while they start to dry rot, usually on the sides where I've had more problems with them. Um, this one I've looked it over and i haven't found any nails in it there's no nails or screws or anything that i found that has penetrated the uh the tire at all so i think the problem that we have here is i don't know if you probably can't see it on the camera but it gets some small cracks from dry rotting 
So what happens is you start getting some leaks around the side walls, like here and around here and here. I may have to get my hammer on it. I had to do it a few times before. I don't want to tear my work made up, but I'm trying to get this bead to break on here. And it's getting close, but it's not quite there yet. It's good, getting close. There we go. Okay. <laughs> it's just about off of there. There it goes, okay. Another old saying I think my grandfather was taught me, if something doesn't want to either fit right or come loose, get a bigger hammer. I was just thinking if this doesn't work, I got a mini sledgehammer over there. I had to use before for stuff like that. And so if the claw hammer wouldn't do it, my mini sledge definitely would. There, it's broke right there. That's all it took. So you have to beat around on it a little bit. There we go. Now since I got that loose, I'm hoping to get my screwdriver in here and pull this tire up over the edge of the rim. And now I'm almost working up a little bit of a sweat here. <laughs> As we get closer into spring, thankfully we are getting into some warmer weather. So... I'm to the point where, and ladies, don't get excited. I'm only taking off the top shirt here, so bear with me. i to peel off the old brown work shirt for a minute here. Okay, I finally got the uh, tire loose from the rim right here. I was just looking over the inside of the rim. It doesn't look like it's real bad at all. And just kind of flipping around here. The paint's still pretty good on that, so uh, I was thinking earlier that if this was really rusted up, uh, then I would take, uh, put some uh, primer and paint on that, but it doesn't look too bad, so I think we're okay with that. So the next thing I need to do is take my shop tail. I'm just going to wipe around this bead area right in through here. Make sure we get that cleaned up real good. Let me spin that around so you guys see what I'm doing here. Oh, well, I got this thing out here. I'll show you guys a neat little tool I bought a long time ago. So you can see this, this little deal right here is a, a multi-tool very very handy i bought this a long time ago this one end here is a uh, valve core tool i use that to insert and remove valve cores they go right down in there okay then i flip this over it's got several taps on here in case these threads ever get messed up um, on one of these tires sometimes that can happen uh, for different reasons this tool here has a nice little tap right here so i can retap these threads this one goes in the inside because you got to have inside threads and outside threads on these valve cores. I mean valve stems. Okay, so you got to have threads on the inside of it for the valve core to thread into. Obviously, there's a nice handy little tap for that end right there. And in case these outer threads, what what happens more often is these outer threads get messed up. And usually because in some cases the valve cap is missing and some folks don't catch that in time and you get some debris and rocks hit it and things like that, that'll mess your threads up. Makes it virtually impossible to put your valve cap on, which is why it's threaded on the outside is for your valve cap. This part of this tool here fits over the outside of these threads like this. And in case I need to retap those outer threads, I run this on here just like that. And I can retap these outer threads and make them just like new again. But that's how to use that tool. I'll be using this again here in just a minute to take out the valve core out of the inner tube. So I'm gonna go get the tube. We're gonna work that in and try to get this job done this evening. Okay, here's the new inner tube. I just purchased at one of my local uh, parts stores just a little earlier today. So we're just gonna get this out of the package here. I'll show you guys real quickly if you can see this okay. If you try to do this on your own, you, you absolutely must get the right size tube for the tire. Critically important. The tube is too, is too small, it will not inflate correctly. If it's too large, it's going to over inflate and possibly damage the outer tire. So matching these numbers up is critically important. I don't, you probably can't see in the video on the side of the tire here is a number. This one is a 15 by 6.00 so on and so forth. So that number is critically important and 
it's not necessary to really know exactly what all these numbers mean it's just a matter of matching up the tube to the tire look on the packaging here it shows 15 times 600 which same as the 6.00 hyphen 6 so i'm convinced i've got the right size tube for this tire all right one most the most in, critically important thing if i can flip this around and show you guys what i've been talking about it's the first time i've demonstrated this in a video i've talked about it before never demonstrated it if you can see the tube of course has its own valve stem right here it is it's got a cap that comes with it and i'm sure it has a valve core also in there if you look and see that the, this valve stem is slightly set off to one side what's critically important is that this tube goes in the correct way and i may even screw it up you know before it's all said and done these things can be really tricky okay i was telling you guys in a previous video <laughs> i made a serious mistake a few years ago on my uh i still have an older uh it's an mtd brand uh riding lawnmower that i used for years and years and years and it's now kind of being salvaged for parts it was in that one i was changing out or putting an inner tube in one of the rear tires and it's been a long time ago and i've learned my lesson since then at the time i really didn't even know that there was a right or wrong way to put these tubes in i believe me i found out the hard way <coughs> because this tube goes in backwards what will happen or let me go over what's supposed to happen in the first place if the tube is in correctly and i'm thinking like this sure looks right <coughs> Then when I air the tube up, it's supposed to push this valve stem outward on the rim, okay? If I put this in backwards, in other words, if I flip this around like this, which I, I'm pretty sure is wrong, I know it is in fact, then when I go to inflate this, it's going to cause this valve stem to be sucked inside the rim, and if I have this valve core in here, the valve core, of course, is what holds the air in. It's like a little valve is all it is the valve core I mean it just opens and closes but what I'm trying to get at here in that case on that occasion I didn't have enough sense to know to take the valve core out first and I went to inflate the tire with the tube in incorrectly and it started sucking this valve stem inside the rim of the wheel and I just barely got a hold of it to where I could uh, get the valve core back out and deflate it the reason I bring that up because I'm sure I'm not the only one that's had this happen. All right, so if the valve stem had gone all the way inside the rim, there would have been no way to deflate the tube and get the tire back off the wheel. So in a case like this, a case like that, there's virtually no other option but take a, I don't know, a hacksaw or a sawzall, whatever you got, and literally cut the tire off of the wheel, off the rim, and then there goes a uh, what would have been a perfectly usable tire. So with that said, one of the first things I'm going to do is turn this back around where I'm pretty sure it's going the right way and take out the valve core. This again is how I use this little tool right here. I hope you guys can see this okay because without a camera operator, I got nobody to raise the camera up or pan around or anything. I'm trying to do this all by myself here. But if I can help you guys, you know, out in any way possible, it'll help you save some money, help you learn some tips and pointers. You know, I'll do everything I can to try to help you guys out if you get into something like this. But like I said, you can pick up a tube like this. This tube cost me like $10.65, I think, with tax, which is not bad at all. It beats paying 50 or 60 bucks to replace the entire tire. So right now, I'm just going to take this valve core out, and it's loose. And I want to make sure that I do not lose this. So I can do a close-up on this, in case you guys don't... Again, this is for folks who just don't know much about this stuff. This little booger right here is called the valve core, and that's what holds the air inside the tire. And if you need to deflate, it's got a little stem on the end right here. You just push on that. I don't know if you can see this. It's a really tiny little part here. If I can see this very well at all. It's got a little um, tip on the end here. If for some reason you need to deflate the tire, you can just push in with whatever you got. Use your finger or... Or anything it opens up a little valve there on the end I know my fingers in the way and I can't really demonstrate this very well this can be a little tricky uh, what I gotta do is get the tube down around the realm here and here's not too bad it's got to pull and tug a little bit 
And then I gotta make sure I get the valve stem through this hole right here. Make sure it's seated good. I feel pretty good with that. Yeah, doesn't look too bad. And I gotta start stuffing the tube down in there and get this tube inside the tire. Well, if I got back to the video here, I had a couple things come up in the last few days I had to be taken care of, and uh, so I uh, thought I'd kind of wrap things up here for today, and uh, kind of a rainy day in the heartland right now here in southeast Missouri. You can probably hear a little rain coming down the roof here in the garage here, but <laughs> we got a good roof here, keeping all the rain out. I want to show you guys a little trick to uh, getting these cotter pins out on the uh, riding lawnmower tire here. Sometimes those things can be really stubborn. If they've been in there for a long time, they get a little rusted up and they're just a little tricky to get out of there. As I was showing you guys before, I got this really neat tool here. It's basically called a cotter pick, cotter pin pick, I should say. And this is a real handy tool. And I'll show you guys kind of how I do some of this stuff here, just in case you uh, need to do some home repairs on your uh, riding lawnmower or other type of equipment out there. What I forgot to do, I got to bend these ends out straight. <laughs> I'm getting a little on in years now and uh, as I get older, I sometimes forget <laughs> a few little things, but there we go. We got them straightened out there. Just forgot to do that. I'm going to take our pick here and, and I can take my hammer and just kind of drive it out like this. Well, there we go. Okay, so right there, hope you get a good shot of this. <laughs> As I always say, I don't have a camera operator. I got this all by myself, so I don't know if we got a good angle on that or not. Here it is, what we call a cotter pin. And, um, what happens is after uh, when these things get older, they tend to get kind of bent up and out of shape. So let's take the pliers kind of straightened out there a little bit. Then we got that out of there. Here's the washer on the outside of the wheel here that needs to come off. And I put this back on a few days ago. I was going to take it right back off and kind of show you guys what I got going on here. And it came off really easy that time. So anyway, I got the uh, new tube in there just a day or two ago. Worked out very well. We got a good seat there on the bead on the back side here. Got our valve stem out there where it's supposed to go. I got her inflated up to about 20 pounds or so. These type tires usually will inflate. They recommend about 14 to 15 PSI of air pressure. But when I put a new tube in there, what I tend to do is over inflate it initially just a little bit to say about 20 PSI. And that's because as the tube uh, as the tube ages a little bit, it's going to expand and stretch a little bit. So when that happens, the air pressure is going to decrease just a little bit. So, but it'll be all right. So anyway, I got that all fixed up right there. As I mentioned before, got the new tube for just a little over ten dollars, and that saved me a lot of money for I replaced the entire tire. So let me just slip her back on here again. Got her bearings all cleaned up good there, and uh, these are actually what's called uh, sleeve bearings, what I call them, or spindle bearings, different terms, whatever. So on these front tires too, uh, normally we want to put the valve stem toward the inside of the machine. And this is because the front tire is more vulnerable to maybe hitting something like maybe a tree or a bush or some other obstruction and can sometimes damage the valve stem right here. And if this breaks off, it's going to ruin the uh, tire or the tube cause it to not be able to retain its air pressure. So we want to make sure this is on the inside. So we'll just spin it around like this. And of course it goes right back on the spindle very easily just like that and that's, there we go back on there I want to be sure and put my outside washer back on it's very important because I need that on there to uh, press against the outer bearing let's see if we can turn the tire a little bit here you guys see this a little better hopefully so it's back on there the other thing I want to show you guys Sometimes if these cotter pins have been removed, I meant to get a new one and I simply forgot. I was at the hardware store just yesterday and, and I meant to get a new one, but I can always reuse the old one here once it gets straightened out a little bit. And uh, these things, after they've been removed, like I said, they get kind of bent up and they can really be a booger to, to put back in there. So we'll try it. Another neat little trick I want to show you guys while I got the camera going here is that, like I said, these cotter pins can really be a hassle to reinsert once they've gotten bent up a little bit. It can be really honored about going back in. So I can take my pliers and just kind of work it in a little farther and just have to kind of wrestle with it a little bit. Now the next thing that comes up is when they're being this stubborn sometimes I need to tap on it with the hammer or whatever but here's the problem. I can't get my hammer in this little small space right here. It just won't fit. 
So here's a neat little trick that I learned quite a long time ago. You can take your pliers, about any kind, put the pliers on the head of the cotter pin, and then take your hammer and tap against the pliers. And there's the cotter pin reinstalled, just like that. So my next move here is to take my needle nose pliers, hopefully, if I can get them in there, or I should say when I get them in there. And I want to bend the ends of this cotter pin back out like they were before. Now I'll use the other pliers since I got that far. Got a little more leverage on these. And we'll just give that cotter pin a little bit of a clinch like that. A little more of a bend on this side over here. And a little bit of a clinch like that. And there it is, all fixed up. Now we have our wheel back on the machine, got the new tube in there, all inflated, and everything is looking good. Last little step, I have a little, uh, basically a dust cover type cap right here that goes on the outside of this. This just snaps right on, put that over that, snap her on there. There we go, job finished up just like that. Next step is let her down off the jack. And we are just about back in mowing business. So there you have it. A great way to save money on your riding lawnmower tires or possibly some other types of outdoor equipment you might have just by purchasing a new inner tube instead of replacing the entire tire. Great way to save some money. So I'm going to wrap things up. i got a little church adding for this evening. I'm going to head out to you here in just a little bit. Uh, if you guys enjoy the videos, be sure and give them a thumbs up if you would, please. And right over here somewhere is that little button called subscribe. Love to have you subscribe to my channel. I will have more video content for you guys coming up in the very near future. Thanks for checking out the video. Again, I'm Walt Moore, also known as Dan Wilson. Take care and God bless. See you guys next time.